Hey everyone, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for visiting. I thought I would come on tonight and uh, do a watercolor process video. Nothing complicated. I'm just going to paint this image here. Um, it's called Under the Stars and it's one of the images that I released with Whippersnapper this past fall uh, for the current winter season. It's MT173 and their website is here at the bottom, whippersnapperdesigns.com. And uh, so I thought this would be a fun image to use for January. I'm going to be using some watercolor paper. I am going to use uh, this Canson XL watercolor paper. Uh, I know this is readily available and um, I quite like using this stuff for card watercoloring. So I um, thought I would mention that to you guys. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I've got a piece of that Canson watercolor um, cardstock cut down and um, I keep just the little packages of papers um, here at my desk cut down like this ready for stamping so I don't have to go cut a piece of paper every time I want to um, stamp or paint something. Um, I just find that it helps with my workflow here if I have some papers already pre-cut. I'm going to be using uh, the Misty, the Mini Misty, and if you've never used a Misty, it comes with this foam insert. And um, if you are using a cling stamp, so one that doesn't have any cushion, like a clear stamp, you leave this foam in place. Otherwise, uh, if, you're if you're using a cling mounted stamp, you remove the foam, and it's just a piece of scratch paper, uh, remove the foam and then you add your paper to stamp on. And then by removing the foam, it makes up for the difference of the foam cushion that's underneath the red rubber. There's the stamp, so cute. All right, so I'm just gonna place this down here. <clears throat> and I kind of just needed a no brainer, a little activity, kind of relaxation activity. So what I'm doing here is I'm just checking the grid. The cover of the Misty has a grid on it. And so I'm just checking to see if my stamp is positioned on here straight. And that'll just help me um, uh, stamp it on here straight as well. And then I don't have so much to trim off when I trim down this piece. So I'm going to use uh, VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink. Um, I used to use black stays on for watercoloring um, and stamping images, but I found that I really like this um, this black ink uh, as well, and it's not a solvent-based ink. So, and I've been a stays-on girl for decades, but I really like this VersaFine Clair ink as well. <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this a few times just to get a really nice stamped image on watercolor paper. Um, sometimes you need to stamp multiple times so that you get a good impression with the texture of the paper there. So I'm going to stamp it one more time. That's probably good enough, but we'll give it one more just for good measure. There we go. And then I'm going to use the little... Um, stamp block scrubber from Hero Arts to clean my stamp and I'm just using uh, Stampin' Up's Stampin' Mist. I had a this little bottle for a really long time and I was lucky um, a couple of summers ago to find a brand new refill at a yard sale for a steal of a deal of course so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back in here so it can dry. All right, so now I'm ready to get started here. And always put your foam back so you don't misplace it. <laughs> it's cut just right for the Misty. And the other Misty sizes um, come with foam as well. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be using this Princeton, Princeton Snap Brush. It's a number four. And I quite like this brush a lot, actually. Um, it works really well uh, for painting um, stamped images. You know, they're not very large. So I'm trying to see if I have a different size here. Yes. Uh, here is a number two, if you're interested in the difference of the size there. There. 
So the stained one is a four and the white one is a two. So I'm going to start with my four and then I'm going to be using this watercolor palette. It's the pretty excellent watercolor palette from Paul Rubens and it's uh, very similar if not the exact same paints as uh, this palette that I use all the time. This one has the uh, row of shimmer paints in it um, and this one does not but I thought I would use this one today just because it takes up a little less uh, real estate on my workspace here and I'm going to try it to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, even though you may not be able to see everything. And then here on my desk also I have some fresh water. And uh, on the coaster that I ma uh, made for me. So it's really beautiful. It's got lots of leaves and lots of glitter in it. So it's always underneath my watercolor water. All right, so I am going to go ahead and get started. And I don't think I'll zoom you in too far because I want you to be able to see the palette and stuff. So maybe we'll go with that. All right. Um, snowmen are pretty easy to watercolor. I'm just going to start with a, uh, a little bit of a blue color here. Kind of a bluey purple color. And now I realize that you can't see my palette, so it is going to just have to be what it is. <laughs> I'm just going to start by painting the snowman's body with just a little bit of blue here. Just to give him a little bit of color. Instead of leaving him completely white. I kind of wanted just a very relaxing project to work on tonight. Um, I've been working on my upcoming art deadlines. And... Needed a break from that, so I thought this might be a good way to kind of recharge myself. And uh, I guess I'm sad. I don't know. <laughs> I went to see my mom, so that always makes me sad. But today actually was kind of funny. There's a new resident there. My mom, if you don't know, she lives in a memory care facility or a residence um, with, uh, with other residents there that need daily 24-hour care. And there's a new resident that lives there. Her name is Kay, and she's from Texas. <laughs> and... She wanted to know how old my mom is, and I said, she's 71, she'll be 72 in May. And she, she said, oh, somebody told me she was 71, but I didn't know if I should believe them. <laughs> and then we were talking a little longer, and then she leans over and she says, Kay says to me, so when you were pregnant with her, did you have any complications? <laughs> Oh, she was thinking that my mom was my daughter. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure how to take that. <laughs> Am I complimented because my mom looks young? <laughs> Am I offended because I look older? I don't know. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. <laughs> when I told her that my mom is my mom and not my daughter. She's like, oh, I thought she was your daughter. <laughs> oh, so cute. My mom is not much of a conversationalist anymore. So when you talk to anybody at their, the place that she lives, it's usually another resident or staff member. I just get a kick out of talking with the other residents. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I thought she was your daughter. I, and honestly, I don't think I've ever been asked before uh, a, a question quite like that. When you were pregnant, <laughs> when you were pregnant with her, did you have complications? Because I've never been pregnant. <laughs> never, never knew what that was like. I just thought it was very funny. The whole conversation struck me as very, very funny. I took my mom a new wheelchair today 
it's a smaller wheelchair because of how small she is. And uh, I had them tilt the seat back um, so she's not quite leaning so forward. So maybe she won't tip out of her chair quite so much. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense to, to you guys, but <laughs> I guess if you knew my mother and you knew her situation, it would make a lot of sense. But anyway, I thought painting um, some snowman tonight might be a nice reprieve from my day. All right, so I am going to let those yellow stars dry, and I see that now that I missed one, now that I've completely cleaned my brush. <laughs> so I'm going to paint this last one here. And if you hear some weird noises, Pixie is right below my feet snoring. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna move on to uh, maybe their little orange noses. You can see I'm just pretty much using paint as it comes from the palette. I'm not doing a lot of mixing. I'm doing some mixing, but not a lot. And I really like these uh, Milang or Paul Rubens watercolor palettes. Um, the the one in the purple and pink, this one here, this one was sent to me, um, but I use it all the time. Um, this one I actually bought myself before I even had that one sent to me. Um, and I quite like it. Quite like them both. And I know some of you have picked them up, picked up one of the palettes or the other. Um, so I hope you're enjoying them as well. I just think they're really easy to use and the colors are clear and there are a, plenty of color options um, in the palette and they're just easy to use. Give the snowman some brown arms. I will say that I am kind of shaky, so painting little snowman arms tonight is a challenge. And I don't know why I painted the arms first here. Generally what I would do is paint the background because the background I would kind of do a, a larger wash and then in a lighter color. And then once it would dry, I would paint the arms. But apparently I'm doing things a little different today. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna paint their um, scarves and their earmuffs. I think I'm gonna go with kind of like this fun peacock blue for one of them. Kind of um, knock down that brightness just a smidge with some of the um, purple that's already in my palette here. Our weather has finally warmed up a little bit. We're not supposed to get below freezing until about Friday of this week. So hopefully most of the snow we get melts off and the rain that we're getting is going to be soaking into the ground. Because we definitely need moisture here. I could do without negative 20 degrees though. <laughs> that was a little much. <laughs> Says the woman who stays in a warm house, right? <laughs> and now I'm just adding a little bit of this um, this green color here just to give that scarf a little character. All right, so the next scarf, I think I'll paint I'll paint it like a, a purple maybe. Let me match my fingernails. And I'm adding just a little bit of the other kind of purple, just for some variety there. And now on to their earmuffs. I think I'll go with maybe like a gray. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the black and mix it with a little green that was in my palette. 
just to make them like a light gray. And I have some buttons to do as well. I think I'll paint those back to brown, maybe. Do I even remember which brown I used? I don't. I think I'll go with this one. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, wash around the stars with just a really light blue. And I'm gonna water um, the paint down really, really thin on my palette here. So you can see how much water I'm adding there, making it really transparent. And then I'll just use that to kind of block some color around the images. And I want to be careful not to touch where I've already painted because I don't want to pull any of that color into the background. This is when it's helpful to start with this process since this is such a lighter color then you don't have to worry so much about working around the images that you've already colored. That's okay, we're gonna live life on the edge tonight. go. Now I like that. So I've got my background nice and lightly painted. You may not even be able to see it all that well. There you go. And the snowmen are painted. I think I'll add a little more blue to the snowmen um, just to kind of deepen up their shadow areas. And I've just mixed a little bit of the, um, this is the Payne's Gray, I believe. It's kind of a, more of a blue, but um, I'm just mixing that on my palette with some of the other blues and purples that were already there. So you can see painting an image like this takes barely any color at all. I think it, um, with all the watercolor palettes that I have, and how little it actually uses when you paint um, cards like this, card images. I think I have enough watercolor paint for my lifetime and then some. Okay. Now that that's a little bit dry there, I'm going to add just a little bit more here under the scarf where there would be the most significant shadow. I really like these uh, synthetic brushes. They keep a really nice point. You can see how nice that point is still. I think they work very, very well. Okay, so I am going to set my palette aside and 
once that dry is dry, then I'll go ahead and close it up. But I'm going to let this uh, watercolor panel here um, dry. I'm going to go cut my cardstock, and I will be right back. All right, I'm back. I have uh, chosen a patterned paper, and it is from the uh, Dear Lizzie, She's Magic collection, and it's an unusual paper to be using for winter. Um, but it had this um, blue here on the front, which is really more of a purpley blue, and I thought that might be a nice combination with my um, painted blue and purple scarves. So I pulled that card out, and it also has yellow, and then these X's kind of mimic stars as well. So I chose that paper. I die cut my uh, painted image with a circle, one of my um, uh, scalloped stitched circle dies. And then I also die cut a glitter cardstock um, that's really pretty blue. And I use the largest of my scalloped um, circles in that set. And then because this, the uh, die is so large, I actually ended up cutting off a portion of the side there so that this will go on the side of the card. And then one thing I wanted to mention to you guys. Uh, if you have die cut stamped or um, and colored or painted images before and it's left impressions of the color or the stamp, the inks on your cutting plates, um, what I've been doing is using just really thin newsprint and placing it over the top of the stamped image and then the ink or paint transfers to this instead of my clear cutting plate. So um, just a tip for you. So you're going to uh, put your stamped project down on your cut plate Put your die down um, and then place this over top and then run it through and then anything from your stamp design will transfer to the paper, um, the newsprint. So just a tip for you. And then I'm going to use this white card base here and I'm going to um, use my bone folder to really press that crease down nice. This is a Teflon bone folder and it doesn't leave um, a mark on the paper like a plastic. Uh, bone folder bone folder does so really really like that and uh, so there's my card base so I'm going to go ahead and just adhere my black card stock to the back of my pattern paper here and this card is not going to be complicated I don't need anything complicated in my day right now except my glue It's not cooperating. Now I'm going to use my uh, tracing wheel, which is in desperate need of a bath, uh, to add some faux stitching here to my panel. I wonder how many miles I have stitched. I've been using a tracing wheel on paper craft projects for a very long time. I wonder how many miles I've stitched. I've actually worn down um, some wheels before used them so much it wore the stitching right off of them. <laughs> All right, so that's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down here. And this card is really going to be very simple. I'm not going to do anything fancy, no sentiments on the front. might add a button and a bow. <laughs> we'll see. And now I'm going to adhere this watercolor piece to the glitter panel. And This glue should work just fine, considering that it's, I don't know, art glitter glue. <laughs> right? <laughs> and 
It'd be awful if art glitter glue didn't adhere to glitter paper. Now that's going to take a moment to set. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside with a um, colored block on top. All right, let's take a look at some twine options. All right, I have some of this yellow and white baker's twine. Let's see how I can put this to use here. Oops. Yeah, that turned out nice. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I have a scallop that got cut off. <laughs> Oy. I might have to get creative and hide that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the block on that just to kind of weight it down a little bit. what I'll do is punch a hole over here um, that will allow me to um, run the twine through the card and put a bow right where I need it to hide that scallop right there so I'm gonna grab my hole punch this is kind of a I think it's like a 1 8 inch hole punch And I'm going to punch a hole here in the spine of the card. And that will allow me to thread the ribbon through the card. Since I've already glued my panel on here, instead of gluing the twine underneath the panel, see now I can thread it and glue it like this, or tie it like this. So I'm gonna turn it upside down because I don't know what it is about me and tying bows, but I have to have it, the project upside down to myself. Otherwise my bow turns out upside down. <laughs> and I wanna cover that um, scallop right there. There we go. And now Oliver has come in here and he has one of his toys that he makes a lot of racket with. <laughs> so if you hear that noise. <laughs> uh, I, I will say I am never alone. <laughs> There's always a doggy with me. If nothing else. There, I think that's cute. Now I'm going to trim these down a little bit so they're not quite so whimsical and crazy. And then I think I'll put just a smidge of glue right here to hold that bow in place. And now no one but you and I will know that that scallop is not complete. Cute. Easy little card, and I um, think when I uh, figure out who I'm going to send it to, I'll um, add whatever I need to on the inside, but for now I'll just leave the inside blank, and there you can see how that twine comes through the seam of the card there. So that's a quick and easy way to make use of a uh, twine bow like this when you've already glued your front panel down for sure. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching uh, this chilled video. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.